Hi, I'm Peggy Fair, and welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Today we're talking with David Sussman about his recent collaboration with a local business to open up a gallery space for his photography. The Understand Photography Show is a podcast, so please subscribe to us on, on iTunes or through Stitcher or however you listen to your podcasts. If you leave us a review on iTunes, we really, really appreciate it. But we also do the behind the scenes video on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you are wondering why we don't have any visuals, that's why. But you really, really want to check out the show notes and see the cool pictures of David's new gallery space. So make sure you check out the show notes at understandphotography.com. And while you're there, the first thing you're going to see on the website is a little button that says, click here for freebies. Go ahead and click there. Choose something free that we're going to give you. There's, there's all kinds of different things. And that will put you on our mailing list. We send a, a newsletter just once a month. It's, you're not going to get inundated with stuff from us. Just once a month, you'll get a newsletter from us. All right, so I want to talk about David Sussman. Well, Dave is becoming a regular here on the Understand Photography Show because this will be his fourth appearance. Four times. <laughs> I didn't realize it was four. <laughs> he doesn't live too far, but you don't live close either. Uh, Punta Gorda is about a little over an hour, I guess, one yeah, way. Yeah, a little bit more than an yeah. hour. Now, you've had a very long career. Yes, I have. Photography, media design, video. Yeah, the uh, website design, you name it, interactive uh, CD when that was a big thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was because I worked for Johns Hopkins University and I was their media integration manager. So I got to play with a lot of the different technologies that were emerging, especially the most exciting time was in the early 90s when digital was just on the rise. I got to play with a lot of it, 3D, you name it. Some of the stuff that you have put out have been has been amazing. I'm, no, I'm really you. impressed. You have, a, you know, you're very technical, yeah. but you have a crazy creative mind too. So uh, well, that that also comes from Johns Hopkins because there, before the digital age took off, I was doing a lot of uh, 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 me. Uh, uh, photographic illustrations, building up multiple images to make a concept on film. And you had to have an idea what you were doing before you even started. Oh, yeah. So I, I learned, it, it gave me some uh, guidelines for future things, I, I believe. That's awesome. Or I'm just lucky, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing I know about you, you work really hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't it, slow down. No, I don't. Ever. I, I get bored easy, and I like to stay active, so, you know, uh, I'm always looking for something. And you're always doing something. <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about, your, uh, your latest thing. <laughs> so now, how, in, how did you get involved with the people from Sandman Book Company in the first place? Well, that goes back to when I first moved down from Panama City, the Panhandle. Um, we came down to Punta Gorda, you know, kind of exploring areas, looking for different things to photograph. And we're going down Burnt Store Road, which is a highway to nowhere almost, well, Cape Coral sort of. And we ran across this one um, plaza sitting all by itself. We stopped in there and we had lunch at some Italian, we had pizza, and my wife goes, hey, there's a Sandman bookstore, won't we go in there? We went in there and that place was amazing. Uh, we met Heidi and Scott. Scott's a uh, carpenter, designer kind of person. Heidi is more or less the manager of the place. Uh, both very creative folks. Are uh, they are they the owners? They're the owners oh, okay. and they're married. Okay. Uh, Scott built a book archway. Uh, a very impressive looking scene. Uh, and uh, Heidi, she's a seamstress designing uh, different Victorian gowns and stuff like this. And I'm just looking at this door going, hey, you know, I could do something cool photography. There goes my wit again. And I'm thinking creative lighting with all the colored gels and whatnot. And I approached her, I said, hey, would you be interested in doing something like this? And she goes, well, I know a lot of photographers. And I'm thinking, well, okay, but still you want to try? She goes, yeah, okay, uh, we're having a villain's day. 
They also do book readings um, for children, and they get up, dressed up, and they were doing the villains thing. Why don't you come in then and do a, a you do your photography then? And I came in with my portable lighting system and gelled the backgrounds and the lights, and it looked like something out of Walt Disney when I was done. I saw she those was pictures. Hooked. They were <laughs> they were amazing. So now, when you say your portable lighting system, what was that? Um, well. Because you obviously put gels to flash yeah, color. Yeah, I, I use everything from uh, 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 the Nikon flashes that the you speed actually click. Yeah, speed lights. I couldn't think what they are. I have all kinds of lighting okay, that I've okay. built up over the years. Uh, so you uh, just so brought a bunch of lights. I just brought a bunch of had lights. Purple walls of books yeah, and pink yeah. walls of books. But, yeah, and then that, you was that Heidi in the outfit? Yeah. Yeah. And she, you would lit her in some bizarre well, colors. I, always, and uh, uh, I tend to use at least one natural color light to bring a little realism back into the uh, image. And that usually lights up the face or something like that. that. But because they're villains, yeah, go crazy with the colors, right? It was so cool. And, and because they're villains and it's a bookstore, well, it just lent itself to the whole theme of things. And, and of course, like I said, they they were hooked on Dave, and the next thing you know, <laughs> hooked on Dave. <laughs> hooked on Dave. <laughs> and next thing you know, we're talking about selling uh, uh, matted prints there. They didn't have any room for a gallery, and they wanted me then to hang stuff on random places in the. And that and, was and, right after your first experience yeah. with them. And, and I, I told them I, I can't hang prints just haphazardly. It doesn't look very no, professional. No. Uh, but they start selling calendars that I were making and so on and so forth. And we were all kind of happy, whatever. Now, the calendars you were making, with, were they like your pictures of yeah. them? Uh, uh, oh, I, okay. I've been selling uh, uh, a Punta, uh, what is it called? River Meets Harbor, which is the Punta Gorda area where the Peace River, Makaya River, and Charlotte Harbor come together. And I, I do a calendar that represents that. Okay. Four years going, fifth year, which was this, couldn't make it happen because of Hurricane Michael, but that's a whole nother story we'll leave alone. Um, but they, they were helping us with sales and you know they, they, they got a lot of, uh, she also has a website called Creative Costumes or something like that. I'll, okay. I'll have to get you the website. Okay. Um, very creative when it comes to it. They, they do the Comic Con, I think it is. Uh -huh. and, you know, uh, the most recent one they put together was a uh, Doctor Strange where Scott designed something where he looks like he's doing that mystical, uh, I can't wait to get together with them and shoot something with that. But anyhow, at some point in time recently, yeah, because least, that was a while ago. Because that I, yeah, that was when I first yeah. met you. I that, saw those like pictures. like 2013. Okay. Yeah, okay. somewhere around there. All right. Uh, and and we, the the our, our uh, friendship relationship never really went beyond that. Every once in a while, I would go down there and shoot something just for the fun of it. Uh, but then their lease was running out. Now this is a 4,000 square foot building they were in, and uh, they decide they want to move closer to Punta Gorda. So they're just outside of Punta Gorda. They leased a new building. Um, it's similar size, I mean, a huge thing. And they go, Dave, would you be interested in having a gallery and what would it take? So here it is, I, I walked into this new building and I'm looking, it doesn't even have floors down, just this huge space. I'm going, I can't fill pictures up in there. Uh -huh. no, that, no, but bottom line, uh, they gave me, uh, it's about 400 square foot okay. of space. Okay. It's in the front of the building, so when you first walk in, and it's separated in a fashion that, even though it's still a bookstore, it looks like uh, I have a business inside of their business. Okay, um, okay. And uh, uh, a little bit about the design, uh, uh, we did hash out for some time exactly what did I need for a gallery and I, I don't know if you ever hear me talk about uh, galleries you know I've, I've showed a lot of places like Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda gorgeous place to be but they have slat boards they might have the lights for a gallery but that's distracting and I not agree. very you know not very white walls you ever go into yeah. a real museum you see white walls pristine daylight uh, yeah. uh, lamps going on the art and, and we worked all that out so um, 
where to go from there? Um, so, so they said, here, you have this space. And then you started designing it with them? Uh, well, that, that them what you no, we, we had frequent meetings where Scott being the space designer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, basically says, I can do this, that, and the other. What do you want? What kind of lighting do you need? And so forth. Okay. And the front of the store had three big picture windows. And I'm just looking at it going, you know, that's not going to work for me. He goes, Dave, don't worry about it. Come back in a week. And he designed these boxes that are on wheels that you roll up against it. Uh, you've seen the pictures. You can't tell what they really do. Oh. And they hide the windows perfectly and look like uh, a very elegant uh, uh, space. So you can move those if you wanted to yeah, make them into you roll them out. And I was, they have three windows, and they maintained two of them and gave me one. Okay. So I got all my paraphernalia in there, so I have this nice window space. Oh, so you have a window space on the outside, yeah, too? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so that, that worked out really and, well. And let me, let me back up, because I did... How, what kind of agreement did you come... Do you have a contract with them? We, or are you paying them a commission? We do have a contract. The contract is more of an exclusivity where you don't bring in any other artists. Okay, that's really the You're contract. You're the only artist. I'm the only artist. Okay. Uh, but we do have a one month, we're upset, I'm upset, we're breaking this lease. So both parties are in good enough control. Uh, uh, if I do something really stupid and upset them, they can say, we want you out in a month. Uh, but right now, because of my popularity in the area, I'm bringing traffic to their new store. So you're not paying them? No. That blows my no, mind. No. You're not even bartering uh, for pictures? Um, what's? Bartering for pictures? Uh, well, again, there's this open agreement. Uh, they still do the costumes and whatnot. Uh, I have, uh, I present these crazy ideas that pop into my head. Hey, would you like to do this? Uh, one of them was going to be a Mad Max with um, uh, Scott uh, uh, kind of thing with his black top hat and we're going to grub it all up and that one we were going to do and that just kind of faded uh the next one is because i, I mentioned something about the grove i've got this trail cut through these deep woods that gets very dark and we're going to do a uh red riding hood kind of thing maybe in it oh, where she'll be like holding so much fun <laughs> she'll, she'll be holding a lantern at twilight and i'll take some lights out in the fields and we'll light her in such a way and she's got this big old dog that looks like a, a perhaps a wolf um, oh my god but yeah you know, we're doing this all the time uh we may not do anything for a month a week or okay. whatever and my wife does do a lot of publicity for them, uh, putting in things into the newspapers and stuff. Um, an article just was written about me in two of their different uh, publications up there, and they get a lot of kudos from that. Um, I had a gallery ribbon con uh, cutting, 150 people came wow. in support of the gallery. And yet, you know, they didn't they buy anything the... from me, but here you got 150 people that flooded into her bookstore. So it's a good uh, uh, relationship we have going. Um, That's awesome. So I'm, I'm happy because I don't have clients that buy photos every day. You know how it is to sell art. It just doesn't move like you would want it to, but you need a space to be able to, to right. have it. Yeah, yeah. So, that is so cool. Uh, so so that's, that's where that's going. Um, now, how, do, how long did it take you? How did you decide which, did you put your, the picture, the photos? Let's talk about the photos. How did you decide which photos? Because you're kind of, you have a lot of everything. You know, I mean, this is a problem that we all have as photographers yeah, where we don't, yeah. we don't, we're supposed to have a niche. We're supposed to have a look, but we <laughs> but we like to do everything. Yeah. Well, I don't really have a niche. Uh, I don't believe, or if I do see a weak link, I'll work on it and try to improve that area. Uh, but when it came to deciding what to put in there, uh, I looked at previous sales, birds and uh, local scenics go very well. So I decided that would be 
pick the top because this is my introduction to the community. Mm -hmm. Here's my official gallery. I have other galleries, but not nothing. That's, <laughs> uh, this is a gallery. The others is more like an exhibit kind of thing. We'll get into that in a moment. Where this is full time, I have control over it. Um, and Heidi, bless her, she really helps maintain uh, the customers and things of that nature. Um, oh, so you don't have to be there 20 I don't have to be there. No, 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 no. Oh, that's I, I'm, nice. I'm literally five minutes away, so okay. uh, I have learned in the past that if you have somebody that's really interested and they get that sticker price fright, call me. I'll come out, and a lot of times they, people will buy if they meet the artist. Oh, yeah. So that's very important. Um, so we have those kind of things going. And oh, yes, they get a commission off the art. Okay. Uh, book, uh, the Sandman does. Okay. So there is that. I sell is more. It's not, though, a typical gallery, like 50%, is it? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Okay. It, it's like 30, 70, I believe, okay. what it is. Okay. Uh, but then we'll have special deals, uh, uh, not a Black Friday, but we plan on a. Uh, some kind of thing where I'll bring in extra art, put it on the floor, and offer that for really good prices. Um, because I have my own printer and been doing this for for a while, I probably have 150 prints in, in that you yeah. stored away. Yeah. So That's it's a easy. The problem that we have. <laughs> in fact, a, a lot of my old stuff that I, you know, I have old portraits that I don't even remember who the people are. <laughs> and so Heather is a painter. She's oh, been painting over them. Oh yeah. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. Did you paint today? I did. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I think she likes painting better than she likes doing this. But you know, oh well, yeah. I can't oh, always. Well, I won't <laughs> comment on that. <laughs> But yeah, I understand you have a lot of, everybody does. So, okay, so you mostly, did you put anything else besides scenes of Punta Gorda around or? Uh, this particular time, no, because of the grand opening and all. But one of the things that also helps sell uh, in a gallery is you don't want anything to be there for a long time. Right. So we're gonna make an announcement, I think every 45 days or so, we're just wiping it clean and we're gonna put up a new exhibit. Those things are gone. That's a great idea. But the one thing we didn't cover, and it's probably jumping ahead a little bit, I also have an agreement with some other businesses, businesses in town, where if you buy a large mural print, I'll design you a uh, uh, area with my photography that is on loan that you can also buy from those places. So I can start rotating art in and out of different places, That's depending brilliant. on. <laughs> I'll work in every angle I can because I don't want to be the typical photographer freelancer. You work your bunnies off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just hard work. And I'm, I'm retired anyway. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh -huh. I've got plenty of people asking me, will you do this, that, and the other? And I always say no. Then they try the back door through Mary Ann, my wife. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes she pushes it through, sometimes she doesn't. <laughs> So uh, 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 it, it's kind of nice. Um, I've gotten great support from the community. And um, we're also coming up with some new ideas for pushing, pushing art, that's a terrible term, for selling art. Um, uh, 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 lately, I've thought of this business model, if you will, to get in touch with uh, s some of the uh, uh, nonprofits. Uh, uh, y there's different ones for pets, battered women, and so on and so forth. They're always looking for funding. And we're thinking about taking one of the better prints, let them uh, 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 auction it off. Auction it off, or it might be a raffle. They get full profits. And then 50% of anything sold in the gallery, they take, and so on and so forth. We'll see where that so goes. So you've got a lot of marketing. And, and do, is it you and Wendy and S Scott? Is uh, that, that would be Heidi. Heidi. And I got Scott. Wendy. Where'd I get that? I, I don't know, but I like that name. <laughs> I know, I do too. Okay, so Heidi, Scott, you, and, and Marianne. And Marianne yeah. you, you do like brainstorming sessions and things uh, like well, that, or they just sort of happen? 
I'm like NASA just thinking things up sometimes <laughs> and I'll bounce it off Mary Ann. She goes, she'll take some notes, then she'll run in and meet with Heidi. It's a vicious circle. Then Heidi would meet with Scott and every once in a while we all get back together and say, hey, this sounds like a good idea. And we okay. see how we can make it work, so. That's yeah. brilliant though, because, you know, I mean, it's fine that you're there, but you need to bring the people to you to look at the, at the at artwork. Yeah. And are this are the patrons of the bookstore though are they are they a good target audience for you for your work? That, that's a good question. It's because is it mostly children? I mean, not children, it, but obviously it, parents. Well, you know, uh, uh, books has been going to digital form for quite some time. Right. Even my wife wear, uh, reads digital, uh, but she also likes to have that paper in front of her. Uh, but the question is, are these good perspective uh, uh, for sale of the art? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. Uh, in the past, when they were located in the other uh, uh, location, they were selling uh, 11, 14 smaller things. A uh, bookstore usually sell, they don't have $300 items. Right. So, but they do have mm, uh, uh, first signed autographs and things. And they do have a few things, but those kind of things sell. But it's more the idea that if I have a client that's interested in my work, uh, uh, I'll send them there first. Because mm. here you've got this pristine space, very well laid out and designed. Thank you, Heidi and Scott, can't say that enough. And they might not order anything from that wall, but they are ordering. Okay. I just had a builder that walked out there and he's got this big fancy office he just built. I mean, we're looking at something crazy like 10,000 square feet. And uh, he wanted to know what I could do for him. And I says, well, go on out to the gallery. And I do have an interactive display that has 200 images on it oh. that you can flip through, uh, right? Now, what is that? Is that like an iPad or something? Uh, no, it's just one of those uh, uh, picture frames that has a touch screen. God, so I, I just loaded it up those. with a bunch of stuff. Every, you know, it runs on its own where you can override it. And okay. uh, if you just let it run on its own, every 30 images, it tells you you can order anything here, what sizes you can order, what material, How and big so is on it? and so forth. Uh, it's about, it sits like this. It's not real big. Uh, and when you say this to my, my uh, uh, you know, podcast it, uh, audience. You, you can't tell. <laughs> Look, try again here. I'll do it right in the camera like this. <laughs> Now, it's like uh, around 11, 14, maybe a little bigger, 12, okay. 18. Okay, I, that's I cool. Know. That's um, a great idea. Yeah, um, so that, Is it like a box or something? People can't it, pick it like up and take it. It's like a monitor. Okay. It, picture, oh, I'm sorry, electronic picture frame. Okay. You know, it's, okay. it's one of the uh, uh, more current ones where you can actually has the touch screen that's which allows cool. you to I didn't even know they made those so yeah, that's neither cool. did I till I came up with wouldn't that be a nice thing to have and so. then all of a sudden they already have it so I mean, what how big are the pictures in your gallery did you get big ones little ones um, medium size well the the space is not huge but I find clients want everything from huge to small so I've integrated a little bit of everything okay. I have okay. um Largest one in that space is probably around 30 by 40, but the average size is probably uh, uh, 16 by 24. And how are you hanging them? Are you hanging them from a rail on the ceiling or? No, nail on the wall. Nail, so you're gonna have to patch that up every time, every 45 days? I don't have to days? patch it. Scott, <laughs> Scott's gonna patch it. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll help if he is. I, that, that was me to me, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Uh, He's no. turning into the little diva here, isn't he? <laughs> no, Scott. I'm rubbing off on Scott you. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Scott told me from the beginning. He says, "Use nails. I don't care." Okay. You know, uh, the window boxes he designed. He says they're easy to patch. He says, "Just do what you want. We want it to look good. We love what you're doing. Keep doing it." That's so. awesome. And are they framed pictures or gallery wraps? Uh, it's or? a mixture. I'm glad you mentioned because I like using, uh, uh, in Punta Gorda, I quickly was able to push gallery, wrap, gallery wrapped canvas. Mm -hmm. And if I go outside of Punta Gorda, I find it hard 
to sell a canvas. I don't know why. You go into Fort Myers, I can't sell a canvas. You go into Naples, I can't sell a canvas. Interesting. They, uh, the collectors at these places seem to be of the traditional photographs. Okay. So anyhow, so I, I definitely have those. I like those because I can keep the price down because you don't have the matting, the framing, the glass. Plus you have the ability not to worry about the glare from glass. Right, uh, right. But now, do you do you have a machine to wrap? No, I do it by hand. You wrap them by hand? Yeah, um, it just takes the right tool. Okay. Um, I, I have a, it's like a vice grip with a very wide mouth that you clamp the canvas and you just stretch it around the bar. Wow. Um, YouTube. You, you can, can you can find how to do you anything. You can on do YouTube. anything. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my my latest uh, because I have had a few folks asking for the glaches. I always like that term, glaches. <laughs> and so, gicle, maybe gicle. Is that what gicle, you mean? Gicle. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Say I'm from my the English, south, man. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, English is my second language. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what my first is. Um, but anyhow, I think uh, Gicle is a French <laughs> word. It sounds French. It is. Uh, gicle, uh, if you look in the dictionary, it means to spray. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, to take it farther in the industry, uh, that opened the door for glaché being just about anything that is done on an inkjet printer. I like to take it a step farther. I get the archival uh, rag. Uh, uh, with no dyes, uh, so it has a 200 year lifespan. Okay. Um, so here you're getting a really, plus the, uh, uh, it's super bright white, uh, the definition in it is just wonderful. Um, so I, I, I do a few of those and I get them matted and framed at a place called 50% Framed is the name of the place in Fort Myers. Okay. Great place. Really? Reasonable price, very knowledgeable people, wonderful people to work with. I will sell them even though they don't represent me. Love that place. Okay. So, Good to um, know. We'll put that in the show uh, notes for well, our I had a people. couple things done to, within a local facility, and I, when I got it back, I was like, I can't sell this. Yeah. So I started looking, and I found a place in Northport, and they just closed down. And then finally, uh, my wife did some research. She says, well, why don't we go here? Going 50% off, really? You want to go there? Yeah. Yeah. The name doesn't say You're it. a diva and a snob. <laughs> 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 went there and those folks are so knowledgeable they're very creative they have taken um, different posters and have uh, fake smoke emanating from uh, uh, cigarettes and they'll inset uh, LCDs and the pictures and I mean they wow. you have to go there just to see what they're doing wow. um, um, and uh, it is in Fort Myers or it's Fort Myers, Cape Coral. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, but, but that area. Okay. Fifty percent frames. You can find it if you Google yeah. it. Okay. So that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so that's how I get so around the much, matting and. How glass. much investment do you have? I mean, did you have a big investment to do this? As far as print, even just your prints, just printing and framing. Um, my or did big, you have so much work already? My big investment was my Epson 9890 printer, wide format printer. That is my investment. Inks, yes, they're terribly expensive, yeah. $150 for a medium-sized ink container, Jeez. and there's, what, nine of those. Uh, so it does add up, but once you have it, you're, you're, you can create a lot of stuff. I've been going through all kinds of different materials over the years, so I finally found those that work well and don't cost a crazy, you know, mm -hmm. you, if you go on the web and you start searching for papers, you'll see all kinds of stuff, stuff that's so outrageously high. Uh, um, I've, uh, one of the places I like doing business with for paper is LexJet. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you heard of them. LexJet, they're, they're, sure. Yeah, they, they, they have a lot there. You can get a representative to help you talk through some of the papers. Um, one of my more interesting is a fabric that I print onto that's got a sticky back on it. And uh, you can get it in 24, 36, and I'm not sure if they do any larger, but by sp 
splitting, uh, splicing images, I've been able to do a print as big as 10 feet by 20. Wow. So um, again, and how do I get these clients? I send them out to Sandman, they look at what's there, and then they ask me, what can I do? Okay. So again, it's a great business um, relationship so far. We'll see where it goes. Okay. Do you, so you're really not getting, it's a real win-win situation, it sounds to me, because you're bringing people into the, yep. into the bookstore. Yep. Their clients really aren't yours, it sounds like, but you get this fabulous space that impresses the clients that you already right, have. Right, And right, then they right. become her well, clients I have a lot well. of collectors uh, from private to businesses. Um, and it, it, let's, let's face it, high-end uh, prints, you don't find many people that are going to buy. You come into a bookstore, you're not expecting to buy a $500 print of some crazy bird or whatever, right? Right. Um, it does happen. Uh, I, I have a lot of followers mm -hmm. from the bookstore. Um, oh, that they saw your work and then they yeah, started yeah, following they you. Started and, following and, me. Okay, and it, it's okay, all okay. about PR. You know, yeah, plus, and you're good at it. And Marianne is really good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, that helps. And coming up with crazy ideas to. Uh, and you're uh, really good with that. <laughs> and so is Heidi. It sounds like Heidi and Scott, huh? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So. Which makes it, it sound like it sounds like it's more fun. Oh, them. it's always fun. I wouldn't do it if it was. But don't you fun. think it's? I mean, I don't know. But d does it seem more fun because you have these other creative, creative people with you? Well, I tell you what. That that's really what cemented everything with us and them was they're highly creative folks. They are. Uh, just watching some of the things, uh, the outfits and stuff for Comic Con, which I'm not that kind of person. But I love the idea that I can find models that got these outrageous costumes to pose for some of the crazy ideas that I'd like yeah, to you, work you with. So have, it's it's yeah. a win win in that aspect as well. So that's awesome. Yeah. Now, are you using the space for anything else? Uh, we both are. Okay. okay. Um, now this space, uh, the one thing I didn't mention, it is divided by. Uh, uh, here you got the two walls, and then you have this semicircle uh, uh, bookshelves that sit up to eight feet high. So, so the space has a definite separation. Now, in the middle of those bookshelves, there is a cutout that's about four foot wide. So you can, the moment you walk through the door, there's a big opening. You can see the gallery, and then when you walk a little farther, here's this opening. So there is this division. Okay. Now, the space is used for their story time for children. Oh, okay. They have book signing things okay. uh, that they do in there. And I have something called Photo Talk, which is another thing that I just felt like, why don't we try this, see where it goes. And it, it's more like a forum where we get photographers, uh, those that just appreciate photography. We, I don't care if you're a cell phone photographer, uh, amateur, a professional, come on down. Let's just talk and have fun. So do you have a table in there that you sit at or um, chairs? Or? Uh, Heidi does have chairs that she pulls out. And one, one of the other things I didn't mention is there's a built-in TV that I can hook up through a Wi-Fi dongle. So from my phone or from a tablet, we talk, you know, somebody has a question that can't be answered. No. Well, the web has that answer. Let me get it for you. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, but because it, I call this a forum because it's not just me talking at you. I want to hear from you. If one of you ask a question, another one has an answer. I want you. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's act as a group of people that enjoy photography. Now, how long how long have you been doing that? Second one happens tomorrow. And I'm how glad you asked. how often? Uh, once a month. Okay. Uh, at and is 5.30, it, oh, second, two, uh, second Thursday every month. 5.30 p.m. Yeah, and it lasts for an hour. Do you serve anything to eat or anything? Uh, 
we considered that, but uh, we wanted to start without doing I that. I wouldn't. Yet. I just think that time of day, I'd be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more sick of my stomach. <laughs> At first, I wanted to have re refreshments, but then I would have to charge. I know. This is a free thing. Yeah. Um, you know, get some. How many eat. people came to the first one? First one was 15. We'll see oh, what happens. Um, that's pretty many people. Night. Yeah, Punt the little town like Punt uh, Punta, Punta Gorda. Gorda. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping they encourage some folks from other areas to come out. Uh, do I want to grow? We don't have to. We've got a nice bunch of uh, folks to come out now. One is a cell phone photographer, and we'll, we'll talk about what's, what's the best way, what's the best phones. Um, mm -hmm. I have a little bit of knowledge in that. Uh, we have those that have uh, the... Uh, uh, lesser cameras to the better cameras, you know, cover as much as we can. Yeah, that's cool. That sounds like fun. We have something similar from our camera club. I forgot what they call it, but it's at a private, you know, actually it's the guy who runs the camera club. It's his private office space. And yeah. They, I can't remember what he calls it, but it sounds very similar. Yeah. And, they, and he's been doing it for years. Yeah. People like it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. well, so, all right. So, say I want to or anybody wants to start collaborating with a local business as a photographer, do you have any, uh, any tips, any advice? Well, I tell you what, the, the thing, the one thing that has worked best for me is joining the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't think I could have grown in the area without it. Uh, they have many events every week. Uh, some are regular monthly and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the events, uh, 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 you, you know, businesses will bring in a gift and they have a, a business card drawing and most businesses bring in wine and that kind of stuff. I bring in artwork. Uh -huh. uh, uh, 1114, Manage 1620. Uh, on Glache and it also has all my business information on the back and that that has been a drive. I, I do a lot of things for the chamber uh, such as the uh, jazz festival artwork and, and things like that but it's the interactivity with other businesses that's a sure way of getting meeting them. Yeah. Chamber. Well, I go to each one individually when they have this going on. Uh, uh, average chamber event seems to be somewhere from 50 to 100 people. Businesses, yeah. not people, yeah, businesses. that's awesome. So we, we've gotten business with the hospitals in, in locally. Um, and that's all from a the wealth, chamber? Yep, okay. wealth management. Uh, turned out they were a collector that bought 25 canvas pieces. Okay, nice. and it's like, wow, isn't this nice? Now, also what was nice about that is they make that exhibit, I call it an exhibit, but it's their gallery, whatever. Uh, uh, anyone can come and see the work that's on their walls. Now and it is behind they... closed doors, all you gotta say is, hey, I wanna see Dave's uh, uh, work. And well, it, what do they, what is the subject matter? Uh, put, uh, it's Punta of, Gorda, yeah, of, mostly Punta, Punta Gorda. Gorda stuff. Yeah. You know, um, I had a guy on the show who I'm a big admirer of named um, Reg Garner, and he lives in Sanford, Florida, which oh, is, okay. I don't even think Sanford's as big as Punta Gorda, yeah. is it? Uh, I don't know. It's, I maybe don't know. it is. I don't yeah. know. It's another kind of smallish town. Yeah. But um, he made a big name for himself just doing scenes of Sanford. Yeah. and. You know, he was donating his pictures for the cover of the chamber, yeah, and he was, yeah, you know, yeah, and it yeah. sounds like you've done a it's similar kind of thing. kind the same thing, yeah. Because uh, who else is, a, is there another, I mean, I'm sure there were probably hundreds of photographers in Punta Gorda. There, there, there but are. But does anybody know anybody but, but David there, Sussman? Uh, there, there's one, but he works for the newspaper, and he gets around for doing that. Um, but yeah, that y y name spreads quickly for, and, you uh, know, for the same reason. Uh, they do their chamber publications, and from time to time they go, hey, Dave, you got anything? Now, I am what they call a silver in kind member because of the amount of work that I'm giving to the chamber. That gives me extra PR. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, they, they got a great big logo of mine that's probably, I don't know, eight foot by three foot when they have a big event. Uh, it'll get printed up and hang on the fence. So you see, nice. yeah, you see me uh, uh, everywhere. I love the barter system, as you can 
probably tell by now. Well, you have a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> I love the barter system too, but sometimes I don't have the energy. I just don't have time to barter, you know? Sometimes I'd just rather pay because I don't have time. Because yeah. a lot of yeah. people ask me to barter. And, well, uh, I am semi-retired, and I'm more retired than I am semi. <laughs> <laughs> so it gives, it gives me extra time, and I, and I do like being creative. Always have. Yeah, and you do have energy like crazy, <laughs> like crazy. So any, any other ideas on, on how to collaborate with local businesses? So once you meet them, so you're meeting them first. Yeah. Once and you meet them, this well, idea I, I with, when, with when with why do I keep calling her Wendy? I don't know Heidi. I got a Heidi, 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 <laughs> Heidi. The idea with Heidi was Heidi's idea, though, not um, yours. It was Heidi and Scott. Now they're millennials. Okay, so they're young. They're in their thirties, I guess. Um, they're energetic they make me look lame like I'm a snail moving along these these people are very uh, aggressive with things um, but it was their idea not mine that but they but both admitted say... that they always wanted they didn't want a bookstore they wanted the gallery the uh, gallery doesn't pay yeah <laughs> but what about this other you said you have a collaboration where if somebody buys a uh, well, what is that? Tell, okay, I, that. I have made uh, uh, business deals where if you buy a mural print, usually they're six, seven, eight hundred dollars. And whatever what, what's it is. That, how big is a mural print? What does that uh, mean? It could be. Uh, I'm going to say, in the range of four foot to six foot and bigger. Okay, okay. so if you they buy, buy something like that, and I will provide you with a bunch of images that hang on your wall. Now they're for sale, and you have a little note on there saying they're for sale, and you get 30% of anything you sell. And, and what kind of businesses have you done that with? Coffee shop, title company, um, who else? Uh, so you're uh, decorating. Window design. So you're decorating their wall for uh, them. Builder. Th so they have to invest in one thing, and right. then you decorate and you swap those. And they out. often become a bigger client. Like the uh, the builder, for instance, we started with that. He bought one print, and I one of his model homes. I distributed prints throughout. They need artwork, and they don't want to buy it. Yeah. Now they're they're the ones that I told you that have got this 5,000 square oh, foot or whatever it is yeah. and they're buying art for that. Okay. <laughs> and how did you, how did you, let's say for the coffee shop, how did you make that connection? Turned out uh, the guy that did the coffee shop used to be a free, freelance writer for a high quality uh, publication uh, Harbor Style Magazine in in the Punta Gorda area. We met, he wrote an article for me, a nature article. He was just fascinated with all my work. And he always wanted a coffee shop. Okay. Turned out he was working in a coffee shop across the bridge. I don't know why people say that, but there, you cross the bridge from Punta Gorda into Charlotte County. And, but and he so was, that's how people talk yeah. when they say cross the bridge. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> that's cute. Uh, but he worked there to learn the coffee business and then opened the coffee shop in Punta Gorda. Uh, he asked about... Yeah, we provided, he bought a, it was like 10 foot by 14 foot of, uh, of a sunset of the 41 bridges that's just magnificent. And we helped him with where to put it so people come up there and they'll take snapshots, sel oh, selfies with that in the background. background. So he's got a little bit of How a, did you print something like that? That I did not. That was oh, I'm thinking, new, 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 new. I don't 10 have, by 14. Yeah, it, wow. it was very large. Um, but that's also, uh, anybody that prints something that size is printing it and seeming seamlessly butting them together. Okay. And uh, But it, it looks gorgeous. Oh, um, wow. And I got a set and of... And so you just knew him from... From the magazine. Magazine right. and that. Um, oh, okay. Uh, and then... Uh, and then he approached you and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to need artwork for my... Yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, we, we start. I'll mention again, we started in Punta Gorda around 2000... Oh, I left an important thing out. Okay. 2013, we came to Punta Gorda 
Marianne retired from the Air Force as a Fulbright Colonel. Very proud of that gal, okay? Yeah. The reason we ended up in Punta Gorda is because we we're kind of pushing artwork, pushing artwork, there I go again, selling artwork and looking for places to sell. We came across a place called the Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda, and they had an opening for their executive director. I go, hon, why don't you apply for that? And she wrote up some military resume and I looked at it and says, no, no, you're not going to get hired by a bunch of artists <laughs> saying that you're a regimented <laughs> and saluting and all this other stuff. I says, write about your, you, the love for your puppy and uh, things of that nature. And she got an interview and was hired. Now this gave me As a lot. As the executive director of an art center? <laughs> yeah. Wow, so she, she had no she, experience though. Uh, uh, well, she's managed budgets a lot larger. Oh, I uh, see, you okay. Know, those kind of things. They needed a business person. They needed, okay. They, they've been, uh, a lot of um, art centers are going that direction where they have Ours did. been run by artists and yeah. yeah. So they finally agreed they wanted a business person. Actually, ours, the, the um, executive director, I think is her title, Amy um, Shear at the Naples Art Association, she was their um, controller. Yeah. yeah. And she's been the director for quite a while wow. now. Wow. And you know, now they're not losing money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think, I don't really know to tell you the yeah. truth. Well, <laughs> and, and Marianne did the same sort of thing. She f did the things you would expect as a business. So that's business. how you end up in Punta Gorda in the first That's how place. we ended up in Punta Gorda, but her being the executive director, now she's very, she wouldn't allow me to use her name in a way that I got exposure, but I still got exposure anyway. Right. Uh, let's face it, you know, yeah. I go to an event and they go, oh my God, I've seen you on Facebook, that kind of thing. I finally got an exhibit there uh, in, in their, uh, uh, members gallery, which is huge. You know, I hung about 50 photos uh, wow. and uh, sold 10 after wow. about a month. Um, my reputation first grew from that. I got all about that. You know, it's funny because I, I, I say it over and over and over. If anyone listens to my show, it's you've got to join their local art association yes. because you don't yes. You know, when you go in there, you're oh, you know, you're just mingling with other artists, and and then, but you don't know who the collectors are. No. And then, no. you know, when I that's how I got into the high end world because yeah. I I went broke. I started doing event photography because I needed money. I didn't right. want to do event <laughs> photography, but my first gig was at the Naples Art Association, oh, okay. which drew yeah. me, it pulled me right into the high society with all these really wealthy people. Yeah. But you don't know who they are. They you, look like you regular never people, know. you know? Uh, 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 yeah, exactly. They come in in jeans and whatever, yeah, they don't, sandals. Yeah. You don't know they have any money. In fact, the Next more thing you know, they have some big store up north and they come down here. Well, in Punta Gorda, uh, uh, a lot of things sell for a lot less than they do up north. Some of them were buying stuff here and sending, sending it up north to their stores. Okay. So uh, you just don't know. Yeah, you, you don't know. know. And, but, uh, but you, plus you there, learn. Plus there's and an interaction learn. with the other artists. And that's always good. Yeah. You learn so much. You yeah. know, I've been a judge at the Naples Art Association for quite a few years now. And I, I learned so much about art. Yeah. Because we, we talk about, you know, there's a, a couple of painters, a sculptor, and two photographers who are we're the judges, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes, you know, there four of us have been there for a long time. The one photographer is kind of new, but, you know, you learn more about composition and you learn about, and then you hear about what's going on in the art world here, and did you yeah. know that this, you know, they're going to have this big open house, and did you know that the executive, you know, whatever, you know, you get to know that stuff. It's important if you want to make a living yep. as an artist. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, all right, so what else do we need to talk about? Tips, tips for setting up and promoting a gallery. Well, uh, uh, we, we kind of covered that a little bit. Yeah, we, uh, we uh, did. Face, Facebook is always a great venue for me, but I, I've spent five years building a uh, nice audience uh, of following. All right, say I want to build as an artist, as you did. Tell us what you did in Facebook, or what you are doing, did and are wow. doing. I'm not Because Facebook sure. keeps changing. Yeah, Facebook keeps changing. Um, 
Now, do you have a business page or a personal page? Or both? I, I, I guess the way it started was with both. Uh, I started with the business page, and there's so many crazy things to get likes and stuff that I built up a 10,000 people audience within a year. I'm not even sure how I did it. It was just every day you get on it. I guess that's real. Okay, number one thing, Facebook. Respond to anybody that responds to you. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. people want to feel like they're in touch mm -hmm. with the person. And if you got a hundred people, you get a lot of comments uh, uh, that you have to. It, it doesn't matter if somebody goes, "Hey, cool man," it, it, yeah. at least give them a thumbs up yeah. or something. But I, I do try to answer everybody, and that does give some sort of feel of direct communications. I think that's important. I do too. Um, uh, but you what? post every day? Yes, I post once a day. One of the things I found important, okay, here's a good tip in Facebook, trying to sell yourself. You ever see the people that post 50 photos and say, look at this, nobody cares. Post one of your best. Make a comment about it. People love to hear positive stories. Stay away from the negative stuff. Our world is full of negative. You know how many people that are out there that are hungry for something positive? That's really a key too. Very important. That's a great. That's great. So, are you still working the business page, or do you work, see what uh, happens to the me? The business page, I don't. Because they don't show them to anybody. No. I work more on. No. I've, I'll, I'll post it on the business page, but then I share it on my personal. Uh, because yeah, that's that, the only that's way anybody's going to see it. thing it took me a while to learn was, if you try to sell something on Facebook. You turn people off. They oh, don't want to see. Ad, uh, Facebook's full of ads these days, and yeah. it's gotten worse. Um, I try to be minimal about any kind of ads about uh, things, awards, and things like people. Again, they really don't. They they just want to hear good stories. Make me feel good. So you post a beautiful picture with a story, pretty much yeah, every day. Yeah, kind of. And you just and, have and, it in and your the story, habit. The story's got to be brief. Yeah. And. and, and I, I would say 50% of the time I try to make something that's a little humorous, ah. okay? Uh, again, this is feel good. Laugh at Dave. I'm good with that. You can laugh <laughs> at me all day. I laugh at myself. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and I, I love including tidbit facts. Hey, uh, have you ever gone to, I don't know if they do this anymore, uh, coffee shops used to go in there and there'd be some simple one-page um, uh, uh, news kind of oh, uh, yeah. paper, yeah. and it would always have humorous facts. I know what you're talking and, uh, about. And that's where I picked this up from. I said, oh, I wonder how that would work. So I started doing that, and people love it. Um, and you just, you just every morning, is it what you do? Or? First thing in the morning, I try to post Do you post schedule something. it, or do you use a no, scheduler? No, no, you just do I, it. I just do it. I, I, I like uh, help me sometimes, because I get up, and I'm groggy, and I write something out, and I say some of the dumbest <laughs> things, but then I yell upstairs, edits, Marianne, uh -huh. <laughs> did you really mean to say that? <laughs> so she checks, uh, every once in a while you'll see a blurb, but often you'll see my post and it says edited. <laughs> oh, that's funny, that's funny, but, that's, but that helps a lot. I, I mean, if you looked at my morning post, it was about the, uh, what is it, the cotton stained bug. Okay, red little beetle that we just happened to see. It did a macro photo on it. I tried to find something interesting back in the early 1900s. It was a manifestation in Florida, destroying crops and stuff. It would excrete a yellow stain. I find that interesting. And you say Boy, it in such a way. Stay positive, aren't you, Dave? What's that? I said, stay in positive. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but uh, that, that's back to the, the interesting tip. Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes it's history. Uh, it's never one thing. That's um, that's that's a great yeah, that, idea. That, that wasn't positive. No. <laughs> I know. I'm just teasing you. That's what I was. A stink bug, man. <laughs> All right. So, what projects are coming up for you? Well, wow. well, how many days until 45 days? What's what's your next exhibit going to be at your I gallery? Don't know. You don't know yet. <laughs> I don't okay. know yet. Uh, uh, I'm not there yet. Uh, it, it, you say that I'm energetic, but it's more like uh, my wife likes to call it bunnies. You know, I, I, I get into a project and all of a sudden I see something over here and she's starting to say, you see him bunnies. And anytime I do that, she goes, bunny. <laughs> 
Uh, I can't say if it's going to be something you know, I have interest in doing. Um, I haven't done water uh, splash photography in a while. I oh, might yeah, play with that for a fun. bit. Uh, yeah, I, I, we're renters and the garage that we're renting from used to be piled up with stuff that was damaged from Irma and I finally was able to clear that out. It's kind of my studio and I haven't really got that going yet so it, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I mentioned working with Heidi and Scott with some of their costumes. Um, but other than that, I, I, oh, I do have the um, Jazz Fest. I design a poster for them every year. That's always fun. I love doing um, uh, photo illustrations, I guess you would call them, okay. where I mix different things in. We sell an original canvas that's bid on at the VIP tent every year, and it usually goes for around 1000 uh, nice. And then we make small posters that are sold during the uh, event. Sometimes there's mugs, t-shirts, and whatnot. So that's cool. Yeah, it's yeah all over the place. I wow. can't say what's next until I do it. <laughs> Jeez, that's cool. All right, so where can our audience find you? Uh, best place to look is Facebook.com/slash DW Sussman, and that's spelled S-U-S-S-M-A-N. You'll see, a, you'll see more of what I'm doing there than anywhere else. Okay. Uh, you, you will catch me in magazines and stuff from time to time. We just had a publication where we're supporting the Fisherman's Village in Naples. Some, I, I don't remember the name of the magazine. Some high-end magazine. Uh, don't recall. No. I, uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, but uh, best bet is is there at Facebook. I keep that current. I do have a website, dwsussman.com. It's not current. Um, I also have a website called Choice Graph X. It's not current. Uh, but it, if you ever want to see all the crazy things I get into, that be one place. Yeah. Where you see interactive CDs and things that. Flash, which is no longer around. It's called something else. But, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> well, Facebook's the best place to, yes. keep, to see what you've got going yeah. on. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you for being on the show, number four. Uh, uh, thank you. That's uh, a record besides hey, Joe and Heather. <laughs> people, people are talking, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's glad to be here. Well, again. you know, it's funny because we did, we had a, like a brainstorming, you know, that we need to figure out how to simplify this this yep. show because Heather just spends hours and hours looking for guests and it's, oh, wow. you know we already yeah. have all these good guests that we yeah. we know who they are we know they're going to be good yeah the main thing people want I believe is good at a good yep. you know they want to learn something from the show so yep. if we have prepped and then it's yeah, then well, it's easier when you're not under pressure yeah, to find somebody well, new well, every think week think about this I, I found a tidbit of a uh, piece of information a while ago where Back during film, the number of images that were shot was very minor, whereas today I think there's something like one billion images posted a day at, at uh, these interactive sites. How many photographers is that? A lot. Yeah, everybody takes pictures these days. From the first day the little tot gets his little cell phone or tablet, yeah. they're shooting pictures. You're so right. yes, people are interested in photography. Yeah, they do. The big question to me, for everyone, and you might not like this, but I love asking it, asking it is photography art. Oh, that's a whole nother yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I got. <laughs> well, thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. And to, to the audience, thank you for joining us. Um, please join one of our Facebook groups. We had talked a little bit about Facebook at the end, but groups are a great way to interact and to meet other photography artists. We have one of our groups is called Selling Your F Photography as Art. So we've got people who, you know, are kind of talking about their journey and then I'll put links in there and we'll talk different, give advice and things like that. And then the other one is just a general photography group where you can share your work and ask questions on what kind of lens to buy or whatever, you know, or how to do something. Um, so those, if you just go to facebook.com under slash understand photography, you'll see where it says groups. Join one of our groups. I'm Peggy Farron. Thanks for joining us on the Understand Photography Show. Uh, we will be back on Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time.